I'm Charlie. Today I'm going to walk you through building an Expo application that has native code in it, and I'm going to build it for iOS and Android using Expo and EAS without having Xcode or Android Studio on my computer. Um, to get started, I'll need to have Node, Yarn, Expo CLI, and EAS CLI installed. If you don't have those installed already, an easy way to do it is with Volta. I'll show you how to do that now. I just go to the Volta website, copy this command, run it, it'll complete pretty quickly, and then I'll type Volta install node yarn expo CLI EAS CLI. Great, now that that's complete, I can start my project. To get started, I'm just going to create a new expo project. I'll do that by typing expo in it demo7. This will make a new directory called demo7 with our project in it. I'm going to choose the blank TypeScript template here. Blank is really basic and simple, and that's perfect for this demo. And I want to use TypeScript, so I'll choose this option. This will take just another minute to install JavaScript dependencies. I can go into my project directory. You might be used to developing Expo apps using the Expo Go client that you can get from the App Store. But since I want to include custom native code in this app, I'm going to have to build my own development apps for iOS and for Android and install them on my devices directly. I'm going to use EAS, Expo Application Services, Cloud Build Service to do that. And so I'll walk you through using EAS Build to build a project like that. First, I'm going to install the native code that I want. The native code that I'm going to use in this project example is React Native Blur Hash. It's a really good library built by Mark Rusavi, who's a great uh, React Native, Native library developer. And it's also very visual, so we'll be able to tell for sure if it works. The first step here is just to copy the name of the library exactly, and then type expo install, and then paste that in. Here it's React Native Blur Hash. That just takes a second or two, and installs all the JavaScript I need, as long as as well as the Objective C, Swift, Java, or Kotlin native code that needs to go into our project. Now that the native code is in place, I need to build the development app for iOS and the development app for Android, and install them on my devices. The way I'm going to do that is using EAS Build. Um, so I'll just type EAS build profile development since I want to build development apps and then platform all since I want to do Android and iOS at the same time. To use EAS cloud services, I need an Expo EAS account. I can make one if I don't have one already by just going to expo.dev and signing up there. Clicking the sign up button here, putting in my email. hitting sign up. Great, now that I've made my account, I can use it to log in to my uh, EAS build command on the command line. So I'll put in my username and password here. To build this development app in the cloud with EAS, I need to configure this project to work with EAS. I can have the EAS build command do that automatically for me, and that will be easy, so I'll just say yes here. Now it says it generated EAS JSON. I can actually see what it did by taking a look in the project directory. I can go into the product directory and open up VS Code, and then just open up EAS JSON, and I can see that it just added a bunch of metadata here about what CLI version we're using and things like that. It's nice that EAS Build is able to generate for that me automatically, and I didn't have to memorize all those commands. Next, I have to make an Android application ID and iOS bundle ID. These are basically identifiers that uniquely identify this app uh, for iOS and Android, and any other sort of copies of it that are really the same app. So the default suggestion here from EAS Build is pretty good, so I'm just going to hit Enter twice to choose that here. Another thing I need to do to build these development apps is I need to install the Expo Dev Client module. Um, EAS Build has detected I didn't install this yet and can install it for me. That's what I want, so I'll hit Yes here again. The EAS, or the Expo Dev Client module will basically let my app that I'm going to run on my phone connect to my computer and run code from there dynamically. It'll make the app that I build work kind of like the Expo Go Client, if you're used to that. Here, I'm going to generate a new Android key store. That's the easiest thing to do if you don't understand what this means. Now, the Android 
build has been uploaded to the servers and is kicked off. For doing the iOS build, I'll need to log in with my Apple account. Here, I'll need to generate a new Apple distribution certificate unless I have one already. And I'll need to register a device as well. Here's how I can do that. I can say yes here, since I don't have any registered yet, and I'll just choose website. That's the easiest way to do it. Now I'll see a QR code appear in my terminal. I can go over to my iPhone over here, and I'll just open up the native system camera. I'll point it at this QR code on the terminal. And then a little yellow link will appear that says expo.dev, and I'll tap on that. That'll take me to this website that says set up your device for internal distribution. I'll just click the black button on that now. It says download profile. Then I'll see a pop-up on my phone that says the website is trying to download a configuration profile. Do you want to allow this? And I'll say allow. Now I'll see a, a modal that says profile downloaded, and I can review this in the settings app. I'll close that, and now I have to go into the settings app. So go into settings, and fortunately, it's right at the top here. I can go into profile downloaded and tap install. I have to enter my passcode here just for security. Apple doesn't want people to be able to install devices on it, random apps on devices they don't own. But this is what I want to do, so I'll say install here. Once I do everything like that correctly, I'll be back at a web page that says, your device is ready to run internal distribution builds. Great. Now I can go back to the terminal where I have the EAS build command running, and I can press a key to confirm that I'm already ready here. Now it'll say select device to ad hoc build, and I'll see my iPhone has appeared here. Once I select that, it'll start uploading the code to the cloud. I'm going to skip setting up push notifications to this project because I don't need them for now. But it's pretty easy if I ever want to do that. Great. Now I can get a link to the iOS build and the Android build as they're happening in the cloud build service. These will take just a minute or two, to, or just a few minutes to complete. So, great, it's done now. So now I can install the dev app on my iPhone and on my Android phone. Here's how I can do it. I have these two QR codes that I can scan on the devices. Since the iPhone one is here on top, I'll start with that. Just like before, I can open my system camera and scan this QR code. Actually, the iPhone one is below. So just like before, I'll open this. I'll see open in iTunes, and then I'll tap this, and I'll be popped up with this message that says, API.expo.dev would like to install Demo 7, and I'll hit Install. It's a little bit tricky sometimes to find where this is installed. I found the easiest thing to do is to go all the way to the right on my phone and go to the app library and then go to the recently added folder. And then it's usually the top thing. Um, if I type Demo 7, it'll also work that way. And I can, into my search thing, I can see it's installed now. Cool, now I get this message about, hello there friend, this is your first time opening this Expo client. I'll say, got it. Now I need to run the dev server so that I can connect to this. So before I even do that, I'm gonna get the app installed on my Android phone as well. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go to the Android link, I'm gonna scan that QR code with my Android device. On some Android phones, you can just point the camera at the QR code, just like I did on my iPhone. Some others, you may need to download a QR code scanner from the Play Store. Now, on my Android device, I'll go to this build page on Expo's website. And here, I can just tap this black install button. This will download a file that is an APK that I can install. A lot of Android manufacturers are kind of concerned about security and they don't want people open downloading random APKs and installing them by accident. You probably wouldn't want your mom to do this, for example, the, depending on who your mom is. So on my phone here, which is a Google Pixel, I can't actually open APKs from Chrome. So what I need to do is I need to go into the files application 
and look at my downloads, and then I'll see that I have this file that I downloaded just now, and I can tap on it. And it'll say, for your security, your phone isn't currently allowed to install unknown apps from this source, so I'll have to change that in settings. I can go to settings from a link there, and then allow files to install from this source. You may have to do something similar on your phone. Once I do that correctly, I'll get a pop-up that says, do you want to install this app, Demo 7? And I can hit install. Once I do that, then I can do kind of the same thing here, where I find the app, and there it is, Demo 7. And I have pretty much the same screen as I do on the iPhone, although this one's in dark mode. So now, both of these are telling me to start and do an expo start dev client, so I can start this on my computer and connect to it from these devices. So I'll do that next. I'll go back to my terminal, and I'll type expo start dash dash dev dash client. This will open the Expo Dev Tools for me. You may be familiar with these if you use Expo before. So now I have a QR code right here. And so now I'm gonna actually scan these with the QR code scanner inside each one of these client apps. I'll move this window over to the right so that it's a little easier to see what's going on. And you can take a look at what's happening on both of my phones. Um, We'll hit scan QR code on this Android app. It'll bring up the QR code scanner and I'll point it at the QR code in the Expo Dev Tools. It'll run the bundler. And then I'll get a message that says, um, you know, open up app.tsx to start working on your app. Now I'll do the same thing on my iPhone. I'll hit um, I'll open the camera app because that's how I scan QR codes on iPhone. And I will point it at this QR code here in the dev tools, and then I'll hit open in demo seven. Camera wants to open demo seven, hit open. And now, um, now it says open up app.tsx to start working on your app. Perfect. So then I already have the project open in, in VS code. So I can play around with that. And I'll just say, hello from an expo dev app text. Save it. And now on both devices, you can see that it's updated. What's really cool now, as you remember, I installed in this this React Native Blur hash code. So I actually should be able to use this native code inside each of these dev apps. What I'll do here is I'll go find the example code and I'll just copy and paste this into my app to see if that works. Save it and there it is. Look, I have a blur hash in my, on my Android and also in my iPhone now. Perfect. So that's how I've included native code in an Expo app that I built in the cloud using AAS build. If you want to do internal distribution or submit to the App Store, I'll make other videos about that later. Thanks for watching.